we in the Christian world are um, always just trying to grow in what we understand, grow in, grow in knowledge. And there is a, a great deal of concern within our culture, within the Christian body, of um, many things, really. Uh, doctrine, behavior, growth. And uh, one of the biggest controversies is are Christians to judge? Are Christians to judge? Well, there's there's a lot of dispute over that. Many will take passages that are teaching how to judge, and they'll try to say it's not to judge at all. But the Bible has a ton to say about the need for Christians to discern good from evil, right from wrong, and... Ultimately, that's what judging is. It's determining or declaring what is right, what is wrong, and ultimately we uh, decide how to uh, deal with or correct or guide, rebu you know, rebuke, reprove, exhort, based on what the Bible says to do and how to handle certain things. The Bible does not teach us to not judge. The Bible teaches us how to judge, how to determine truth, how to determine right from wrong, how to not be a hypocrite, how to... Uh, guide one another, correct one another, love one another, because that's a part of love. And Jesus said in John seven twenty four, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So this isn't an arbitrary thing to where you just... Uh, superficially look at a matter and render a half-hearted uh, decision on it or be a hypocrite to where you're actually dogging somebody or putting them down for something that you do. And we as believers are obligated to judge just in a righteous manner, in a correct and upright manner. And we need to learn how to discern what something is, its very essence, what makes up its being, and its isness, which, yes, is actually a word. If you'll look that up, it's pretty fun. Isness is a word. So there's you something for your seldom used uh, vocabulary, but maybe it's a good conversation piece. The components that make something what it is. Jesus is God in the flesh. His substance, his being, his isness, his deity is what we see in Scripture brings us to the conclusion that he is God manifest in human flesh. And we want to be wise and judge based on facts, real knowledge, qualifications, and those type of things to determine what something is and not just labels or appearance or arbitrarily or casually uh, taken for granted something is what it claims to be. Someone for instance, how, many, how often in our culture do people say, I love you? You know, one or two dates into a relationship these days, and it's I love you. All the time, I love you, I love you, I love you. But in truth, it's just a label. It's just a, it's not real love that this person is speaking of. 
And if someone doesn't care enough to try and help you when they see you destroying your life, when they see you um, living in a fashion that will, it's like you're carrying around a lit stick of dynamite and this person is watching the fuse get shorter and shorter as you get close to running your life. And they don't care enough to um, reach out to you or try and guide you away and tell, tell you, hey, that's dangerous. That, that's going to run your life or that's going to run your testimony or that's whatever it may be. They do not genuinely love you. They may have uh, some type of connection with you and uh, a level of affection for you, but not in the biblical sense that they see a need in your life and one that they have the ability to help you with, but yet they choose not to help you because of whatever the reason. Usually they don't like sparks. They don't like drama. They don't like the the uh, oftentimes conflict that can, can come out of that. And for self-love or self-serving purposes, because they don't want to deal with that package, um, they just won't say nothing. They would rather sit back and watch you destroy your life. And uh, that's not love. That's not the essence of love or the, the being of love. So we can dismiss that. Even though the person says, I love you, we can determine they, they really don't, not to the level that is needed for it to really be love. And if believers, we would learn and teach our children what real love is, maybe there would be better relationships because the person could pick, pick a spouse, pick a spark, uh, partner that can demonstrate biblical love and not just self-serving lust learning the science of something the knowledge the makeup the being of a matter is what righteous judgment is some will claim many things they can claim to be a baptist when their practice is more pentecostal they can claim not to be something, but in essence, what they believe or what they hold to is uniquely found in a certain uh, sect of Christianity, such as Calvinism, for instance. When we put under a microscope this doctrine of the, perse the perseverance of the saints, that Gnostically and unseenly, God does the believing for a person, the trusting for a person, and regenerates them prior to them actually believing. They come to the conclusion, because of that, the person will persevere in this uh, mystical type of trust, this mystical faith that God is doing for them, and therefore... They will always have perfect faith. They will always have good works. They will always have this because God is doing this for them. That's the Calvinistic belief. And many will say, I'm not a Calvinist because they don't hold to all the unique points of Calvinism, all five points. But this one particular uh, gateway hook into the Calvinist mindset is uniquely Calvinistic. It's not Christian. This idea that God has to do the believing for a person, that they have to have some special type of faith, is Calvinistic. So though a person says, I'm not Calvinist, if they hold to this doctrine, and they believe that a Christian will always have perfect, unwavering faith because God is doing the believing for the person. In essence, in being, the isness of this uh, within their thought paradigm is Calvinism. It is Gnosticism. And it is not. 
Christian. It is not biblical. So no matter what they say they are or they are not, in essence, this is what they have uh, sided with is a Calvinistic mindset. We should never be like the world and just take labels and think that that determines what something is. You can put candy on the side of a nuclear bomb and it doesn't make it candy. And I know the world thinks that they, by changing a label, they can change the substance or the essence of what something is. But that's fictional. It's not reality. And it's not Christian. Pastures are not. I know uh, oftentimes we think it's this label that someone is uh, gets slapped on their back or on their jacket. And that's what makes them... A pastor, no. A pastor has to meet certain qualifications. And if they do so, then they're qualified in essence and in being and in character to be a pastor. If they don't meet those requirements, they can call themselves a pastor. They can get their personal parking space. They can be ordained by a group. They can call themselves a pastor. It doesn't matter. The label doesn't fit the substance of, of who the person is. So those qualifications are in there for a reason. We are called to be wise, to grow in wisdom. That's a big part of the Christian life, learning to discern good from evil, what is from what is not. And for us to look and to think carefully about things what they genuinely are there's many people who semantically sound like they're believing that salvation is by grace through faith alone on the surface that brief encounter appears like they're in line with scripture when it comes to salvation but when you dig deeper and you find out what they're genuinely trusting in, you will oftentimes see that it is a unique feeling, a special type of faith they think they have in performance, in holiness, in some type of work. So in the outward appearance, they sound Christian. But when you check the recipe and you find out the makeup of, of their mindset, you realize this person doesn't understand that they have to rely upon Jesus, depend upon Jesus, which is what it means to trust or entrust yourself to Jesus. And they're actually trusting in something they do. Now on the flip side, Semantically, there's those that have difficulty or maybe they've been taught a certain way to speak and they have difficulty relaying that, hey, I am trusting in Jesus alone with no confidence in myself and I have entrusted or trusted in Jesus for my destiny, for the forgiveness of my sins and the hope of the resurrection in my future. But they may have a hard time articulating that and if we take time, we can actually discover, hey, this person really is trusting 100% in Jesus with no confidence in their self. Though they outwardly, the labeling on it looks like, ah, I'm not real sure. But when we take time to discern what is the essence of what they believe, we understand we're speaking to a brother or sister in Christ. Some say a lot of things. Some will say they're sick. Well, in essence, they're not. They're, they don't have a temperature. They don't feel bad. And we can determine they're not sick. 
kids, for you parents out there, you're very familiar with this. They will talk about uh, being sick when they're not. So we we dig in and we look at the being of the child, the state of the child, and we realize that they're they're lying. They're giving a false truth. And then you'll meet people in life who outwardly appear, uh, for the most part, fairly healthy. They're able to mask the reality that inside they are very, very sick, some terminal, some hurting real, real bad, but they're suppressing um, their sickness. So outwardly, outwardly, they look well. Inwardly, they're genuinely sick and hurting, and it can go either way. Uh, recently, um, a disheartening experience was someone appeared to be uh, contacting me under the pretense of, of checking on another uh, brother or sister in Christ, expressing outwardly um, genuine concern for the person's well-being. So the, the communique was, was addressed as such, and then a very short time later, I get additional facts and it turns out, by all qualifications and and uh, questionable circumstances, concerning circumstances, this person was being a busybody, potentially stirring up gossip or trying to actually generate problems uh, for the other person or myself or strife or conflict. And it was very disheartening because the outward appearance was that someone was expressing genuine concern. And I believe this other person to be a, a believer. However, the essence, the being, the facts of the matter, when weighed, lean toward this person being a busybody and a gossip and one who feeds uh, potentially on, on strife and, and drama so that's with the um, evidence leaning to the latter, then I will have to view that person as a busybody and one that is untrustworthy until they can prove to have grown enough that I can view them otherwise. Um, so if you genuinely love someone, then you will try to care for that person and bring to that person whatever it is they need. If it's food and you're able, then it's food. If it's money and you're able, then it's money. If it's a listening ear and that's what they need and you're able, that's what you'll offer. If it's correction because you see them destroying their life, though there may be sparks, if that person is genuinely saved and in the word, I believe uh, down the road, even if there's some friction, that person will come to see that you did what you did out of love and even at the cost of uh, comfort to yourself. And those are the people you want around you, those willing to discomfort themselves for your benefit. And you need to be the same to other people. That is what it is to love your neighbor. If I'm headed toward a cliff and you're unwilling to warn me to stop, you see me uh, endangering myself and, and speaking metaphorically of, of sin or destructive life, and you're willing to sit there and watch me just go over it without saying a word, please. Please don't tell me you love me, uh, because in essence, that is simply not true. So as Christians, take time. Take time to ponder, to really think on a matter of what its essence is, what its being is, what the elements are and the facts. And let's try to learn to discern, to do as Jesus commands us, to judge not according to the parent. To appearance but judge righteous judgment 
correct judgment and we'll all be the better for it helping guide one another uh, through this world where we can all end up uh, in a bad way in a hurry with just you know taking our eyes off christ and losing our way so let's take time to uh learn things and one more thing you can outwardly change and in the culture everyone's familiar with the controversy you think if you put on enough paint or chop off enough of this or so on enough of that or put on the right kind of clothes, you can determine uh, or change the inherent essence of a human human being from one gender to another. However, when you study the fact that if a person is born with an X and a Y chromosome, no matter what you alter on the outside, no matter what you uh, try to do to uh, mutate the appearance of something the inherent nature is that person is born a male and will pass away a male and coming down and grabbing reality of what something is what its being is and helping others to understand what that is is Christian we we need to hold on to reality Hold on to truth, learn it, share it, because truth frees, lies, sin, brings into bondage and destruction. So that should be our avenue. And it's a day-by-day -day thing. It's a, a realigning your, your mind all the time with the way God sees something as the world tries to sway your opinion in another. So just wanted to... Do a little small talk, put a little something out there. If you love someone, try to help them genuinely. And don't look at the surface of, of things and try to take time to think, to ponder, to walk around it, get a good perspective on, on what something is, and judge righteous judgment. And that alone will help in, in so many ways because it'll teach us to not be gullible and, and quick to be deceived, but someone with the ability to discern right and wrong. And that right and wrong is found not in our feelings, not in, uh, in those type of, of things, but it's found in the Word of God, which will be affirmed by the Holy Spirit. If you'll just open your heart up to believing what God says, how He says it, and what he calls truth. And with that, I want to say God bless you. Take care and with Thanksgiving coming up. You know, we have so much to be thankful for, not just on, on Thanksgiving, guys and girls. We have much to be thankful for every single day. So let's focus on those things because in all essence, in all being, God is awesome. We love him. We should love him. We should grow in, in, in appreciation for just who he is. And the fact that he died, he stepped into this world, and he died, was buried, and rose again, Jesus Christ, to pay for our sins and give us as a free gift, everlasting life for all who would entrust or trust in him as their personal Lord and Savior and that he did it for them. We have so much to be thankful for now and forever. So God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving. and Hope everybody has a, a safe and happy holiday. Until next time, take care.